Hello, so today I'm going to show you how to draw lines, squares, circles, triangles and just about any shape you want really on Construct 3. So let's uh, hit play and show you what I mean. So if we just drag and draw a line like this, so we can actually rotate it round. And it's when we, we, when we let go of the screen that's when it draws the black line. So if I just let go now, and that's that's uh, how you create lines. Let's see how we create that. So we've got a sprite. I've just called it background, and I've called it in yellow. And we've got two other sprites: stretchy line and stretchy line black. So if I just double click, zoom out. So I've got the origin point on the left, so just right click, quick assign, left, and the size is 10 by 50. And, oops, and this black one, this is just basically a clone, so right click, clone object, it has the same origin point, same size, the only difference is it's black instead of red. And we also got the, the touch plugin as well. Um where's it gone? Yeah, so we've got the touch plugin, got background here. Uh, let's go into the event sheet. So we've got global variable, I've called it create line, I've set it at zero. We go touch, is touching background, and the condition create line is equal to zero. So conditions are just right click, add another condition, system, compare variable, create line zero, and then you just click done and system create object so we create the red red stretchy line we want to say at the position touch.x comma touch.y so it's just a create object stretchy line touch.x touch.y and once that's created we then set the global variable to 1 and we add an, an event underneath so is touching the background we then set the angle of the, the red line to touch.x touch.y and we also set the width to the distance bracket touch.x uh, comma touch.y comma self.x comma self dot y and you don't have to say self that just we could say stretch your line dot x stretch your line dot y self is just basically referring to this object here whatever you have here and underneath this we have touch is not touching background so to do that just right click go on invert and that brings this cross up here and that's basically saying if we're not touching the background do these following actions so we want to say create a black line and we want it to be on exactly the same position as the red line and we want it to have exactly the same angle as the red line and we want it to have exactly the same width as the red line and once it's created we then destroy the red line and then we're just left with that black line and we set the global variable back to zero so that we can then continue to create another red line black line red line black line and so on so using a very similar sort of technique we can create a square so let me show you what that looks like so this time if we stretch out and we can move it around, we can go bigger, if we go further out from this, this point over here, we 
can go smaller and it's same again same principle if we let go it draws a shape we can just keep drawing as many squares as we want so to have a look at how we do that it's very similar the only difference is I've added this extra line here so we did have set width to distance touch x dot uh, or less we, we need to have set height to distance and also you need to have the origin point let's go into here so have a look at our square so I've just got the origin point on the top corner and it's very important to actually make into a square so keep your width and height the exact same dimensions and let's have a look at doing circles next so this one it goes just bigger and smaller there's no you won't see any rotation obviously on a circle it's just bigger and smaller and I've actually left these are actually circles down here you probably can't even see that but I've left them on this layout because for some reason if I delete it it causes like a flashing effect let me just show you what that looks like if you come across something like that a quick flash before you lay it out just uh, leave those shapes onto the layout and that'll be that problem fixed for you so if we go into the events so it's very similar to a square um, difference here is I've added this bit here so stretchy circle dot width divided by two and the reason I've added this bit onto the end here is because the origin point of a circle is different to that of a square so if I go into the circle so I've got it slap bang in the middle and we do divided by two because we want to do this sort of dif difference here equilateral triangle so that's a triangle that has all the sides of equal length so draw a, a Christmas tree or something there so very similar to other things there's, there's always just little differences here and there and the main difference with an equilateral triangle if I zoom out nope I can't really zoom out there okay so if you can see this highlighted shape you'll notice that there, there is actually the dimensions are a square here but I've left a gap at the very top here and that, that is very important to create an equilateral triangle because the height and width are not actually equal in terms of the shape it only has equal sides the, so by having this here this little gap it will make it so that you have equilateral triangles in fact I'll show you what what it look like if you don't have this gap so if we just click on here and by the way I don't recommend doing this this is just purely for show so now you can see that these two sides are equal but this one is not equal see that that's definitely uh, a lot longer at the top here so 
So maybe that's an effect you want. Maybe you want to have this sort of shape, but personally, um, this is what I was trying to aim for is an equilateral triangle. So that's that's how you create that. Just have that gap here. And I've set the origin point right here in the corner. And this is the events for that. Very similar kind of stuff, really. So, ooh, rectangle. That's uh, very different, actually. And also a lot more complicated, but also more impressive I think. So we can draw a rectangle, we can go up, left here, I'll just draw a square there, <laughs> oh well. Um, so same again if we let go it draws the, the rectangle of it anywhere we want. So to create this effect Let's go into the event sheet. So first of all, you'll notice that I've got some extra global variables. So I've got my standard create rectangle. I've also got rectangle right and left and rectangle up and down. And there's probably quite a lot to take in here. There is uh, 10 events. I think I'll probably start looking at the bottom actually it's probably more first place to look at actually so system every tick and the condition that x is greater than touch.x we then set the global variable to one do various different conditions and what we want to do is to say once um, you're touching the background and it's got this condition with the global variable equal to this, we, we do this. And if it equals this, we do this. Um, so uh, you'll probably notice a few things actually. So on this one, it says minus one times distance. And the reason we do minus one is to do, because when we draw in a rectangle and we draw in it, drag in the, rectangle to the left that's actually like a minus distance um, as this is more of a positive so we don't need to do anything there that could just be a one times I guess um, and we've also got minus one going with the rectangle going up and down so minus one is when it's going up um, realize this is probably not making much sense it is uh, probably quite complicated i guess and uh, at the end of the this sort of very familiar formula here i've added divided by 1.4 and i have no idea why it's 1.4 if i'm totally honest um it's, it, I, I only got to that number by trial and error basically uh, just because when I was first doing it without this, uh, without divide by 1.4, when you're touching to drag the rectangle, your finger was sort of like um, way off to the right and the shape is sort of, even though it's moving towards your finger, it's not actually on your fingertip, if that makes sense. So by having this... Um, I was just experimenting with numbers, trying to get it close, as close to my finger as I can get. And I think this, these numbers here, I've got 1.42 as well. So it's very slightly off on the, um, the negative directions for some reason. So that's, that's why I've included that. And... Let's have a little look at the right angle triangle next. So it works actually very similar to a rectangle. It's just a, a different shape basically. So let me just show you what that looks like. So we're sort of dragging it out. And if we go up, what happens is it goes upside down. 
as you'd expect. And if we go this way, we can go to the left and it goes sort of mirror image, I guess. You can, you know, experiment, go anywhere you want. And same again, when we just let go, it draws shape. Try and get one of every direction. should also show you where I put that origin point as well. That's quite important. So the origin point is right here at the top left corner. I've actually made it into a, a square sort of dimensions. So there you go. And I think it's pretty much exactly the same as a rectangle, if I'm honest. I don't think I did anything different other than actually change the shape. Let's um, take a look at an oval shape next. So when we draw a, draw a circle, it can be squashed into an oval this way, or we can make it really tall and thin. So there we go. And to do that, it's actually, again, very similar. We're just changing the shape. And oh yeah, I just um, might tweak the formula a little bit. Just put 1.4 times distance instead of uh, divided by. And let me show you the oval. Yeah, so I've got the origin point in the very centre, as you'd probably expect. Um, oh, the reason I've kept this one on is because it, without this one on here, for some reason it was creating a unusual grey line underneath, um, underneath here. Let me even show you what I mean. So if I delete this one. Oh, actually it didn't really matter. Could have just deleted that. I know if I delete this one, see if that does anything. No, I don't know why I kept that on there. Okay. So yeah, that's um that's how you draw shapes everyone on construct three. Hope it helps you out with whatever project you're doing. And if you do enjoy the video, please leave a like, subscribe, really appreciate it. Thank you for watching.